Welcome on in. It's time for another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Mike Fenner. Just like that, it's week two of local high school football with plenty of great matchups on the field this evening. That's right, Mike. I'm Ashley Kaiser. And after a, a dynamic late night win a week ago on the road, McDowell took to Gus Anderson Field for the first time this season earlier tonight. Let's check it out here. It was a home debut for Aaron Slocum as head coach for McDowell facing Walsh Jesuit. Senior quarterback Blaze Myers appears in the first game back at home since his knee injury. Myers is waiting for an opportunity here but gets taken down by Anthony Bernard. But same drive later on, the Trojans make an adjustment on it. Myers passes up the middle to James Ziegler as he takes it into the end zone, a 29-yard touchdown for McDowell. Move to the second quarter now. Warriors have it at the 42. Keller Moten acts like he's going right, but turns and makes the short connection to Milan Paris. He's a speed machine. Paris down the Warriors sideline, 58 yards to score. And with the kick, that ties the game up at seven. Shortly after, though, we'd see another incredible pass from Keller. It goes to Aiden Henry making the catch, but Owen Haffrey stops him at the five. But that play would lead on to this four-yard touchdown from Lucas Weaver. The Warriors pull ahead in the second quarter, 14-7. McDowell takes their first hit of the season, falling to Walsh 47-21. Let's go to Mercer County Cathedral Prep facing Sharon. Battle of 1-0 teams at Westminster. Not Sharon High School. In the third, 7-6 Tigers. Bishop Root runs 13 yards. The first down would leave the game later with a leg injury as he goes down here. In the third, same score. Ramblers driving, but a stone play here. Huge loss for a loss of six defensively. Let's go to the third. 12-7 Ramblers. Desiree Carson finds a gap. Goes 13 yards to Pater for the prep touchdown. 19-7. Ramblers win it. They roll 33-7. On the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, let's go out of town. Erie at Shaw. Royals taking this one 56-6. Paul Johnson, 17 of 22 through the air for 225 yards, three TD passes, and 85 yards on the ground. And also, Mercier's prep in action, and they went on the road for the first time this season. A late result tonight falling 29-13 at Oil City. Let's go to Waterford Farrell visiting Fort LaBeouf at Carm Benito Field. Very first play from scrimmage following the opening kickoff. Bison get going. It's senior running back Damian Close. He's getting loose. He's getting gone. 61 yards to the house. 7-0 for the ball. That touchdown scamper. Next possession. Steelers with the football. Aaron Pegues rolling out. He's going to find Stevie Dean as he keeps this play alive. Look at this. Along the sideline, Dean for a feral first down. Some additional yardage picked up as well. Drive continues on into the red zone. It's Pegues over the middle to Julius Phillips Jr. 17-yard touchdown on target. 7-6 at that point in the first. It's Fort LaBeouf, though. Stunning feral 29-28 at home. Let's send it over to the third member of our team, Ken. Hi guys, when talking about General McLean and Harbor Creek, the two teams entered tonight coming off of very different season openers. The Lancers fell in a shootout last week, 49 to 47 at Newcastle. His quarterback Isaac Zeitz broke school records in both passing yards and touchdowns. Meanwhile, Harbor Creek won a defensive battle, 13 to six at home. So which style of play would come on top tonight? Members of the 2024 class of the General McLean Athletic Hall of Fame were honored at halftime tonight. Second quarter already 27-7. Lancers PJ Mitchell dives up through the hole for the touchdown. He's fired up. That extends the lead to 26. Third quarter, Lancers up big and that offense didn't stop all night. Zeitz hits Jared Corwin on the slip screen. He gets a block and look out, he's got room to run. Nobody's gonna catch him. It's a 50 yard touchdown connection to put McLean up 39 to seven. They didn't stop there. In the fourth, it's Cohen. Beachley crossing the goal line for the score. The Lancers post 47 points for the second week in a row. They cruise tonight, 47 to 19 over Harbor Creek. Everything. I have a lot of trust in all the guys I throw the ball to, and I have trust in our line and my running back. I mean, we just have a great unit out there, and we got a lot of trust in each other. We've been building it for a while, and it's just great to great to play with. It was probably one of our better weeks of practice um, as far as focus-wise. Um, you know, going into this, we we didn't know where we'd stand. You know, we went. We know we played a tough week or a tough week one, um, so we didn't know where we would stand. So our kids were definitely motivated. You know, and showcase what we were able to do up here. 
On the Plyley Entry System scoreboard, General McLean wins the home opener, topping Harbor Creek 47-19. In Albion Northwestern, home for Cambridge Springs, the Wildcats try and get something started here. But the Blue Devils have a brick wall. They're in there for the ball carrier. A little bit of miscommunication now here on the Northwestern side. Braden Swift isn't ready for the snap, and the ball goes tumbling. Colt Proper is all over it. Cambridge Springs takes possession. That leads to this. Morgan Appleby with a quick hand. Off to Jordan Washington. Washington weaves his way through the line for the score. Six to nothing Blue Devils strike first. Later, Appleby. This pass intended for Brett Tanya, but Avery Merritt makes the interception. Cambridge Springs does blank Northwestern tonight, though. 32 to nothing. All right, thanks so much, Cameron. Let's go to Wattsburg. Jack Corey, Seneca Bobcats, home for Northeast, and Chris Krahowski pick things up in the second quarter. They had a lot to cheer about. 13-7 Cats, Seneca looking for more on the ground. It was Zach Motes taking off inside Great Picker territory, turns on the Jets, says goodbye. 19-7 on the touchdown. He ran for 112 yards and two scores. Northeast answering. Couple possessions later, a one-play drive. How about going to the air? Bryson Galloway unloading one deep down the field, non-target to sophomore Ethan Ringer, and he will not be caught. Touchdown, Pickers, 19-13 after a failed two-point try. Behind three different 100-plus yard rushers, Seneca tops Northeast, 32-19 at home. Still to come on Friday Night Lights, we've got more high school football with highlights and scores. That's coming up next on Friday Night Lights.